We continue to preview the 2023 college football season here on Midwest Sports Net, and it is a privilege to be joined on the summit today by Coach Paul Hansen in his fourth season as the head football coach for the Mid American Nazarene Pioneers. Coach, let's start with last season really quickly seven and four highs and lows, but when all is said and done, you're still playing at the end of the season for the possibility of, of a Heart South championship. That's on the line there at the end, um, a four game winning streak along the way. Coach, tell us about last year really quickly. Yeah, uh, first off, thanks thanks for having me. And uh, it's always good to talk football this time of year. You know the season's right around the corner. So, uh, but yeah, yeah, last year it was, it, was a, it was a great year for our program and a, really a big step forward that we needed to take um, in the process, you know, coming in in 2020. Uh, that year was kind of crazy as it was. And so kind of being able to, you know, have a, a, a couple regular seasons here, get some recruiting classes through. We felt like last year was a big year for us, and uh, and, and it was. You know, we took a big step forward, and uh, our guys really were up for the challenge. And, um, you know, we, we, we had some really good things that happened last year. Um, and I talk to our guys all the time about wanting to play meaningful games in November, right? At the end of the, end of the, end of the day, that's what you want to do. You, you, you want your season to really kind of be able to – to, to be impacted in November, December at that time of year. And last year we were, the last game of the season, we were able to do that. And, um, you know, it really, you know, we had a lot of highs last year, but, you know, we had a ton of injuries, probably more injuries on a team that, than I've been associated with in my career. So to be able to overcome that and, and still be able to have a chance at the end of it uh, to, to, to play in the postseason was pretty awesome. Um, obviously, we use that kind of as fuel going into the off season. Our guys were not were not satisfied with that, and so um, going into that off season, we had a really good off season, the best one I've had since 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 I've been here. And and uh, so it's pretty cool to kind of see the the transformation of the program going forward, and uh, to see uh, you know what we could do this next year. Coach, fourth season with the program, lots of times you you, you might say, and, and I've thought this many times before, that when a coach is there for four years, and that means he really has his players in. I don't know if it counts as much with 2020, that COVID year, So, but we'll give it to you anyway. It's it's, it's your team, it's your group that's back, and, and a number of all-conference performers coming back, nine that were on the all-heart team last year. It starts, I think, with the quarterback position. Adrian Parsons, while he didn't drop 659 on anyone last year, he still, he still had a great season, good enough for all-conference recognition. Yeah, and really, if you look back on his freshman year, he he played very sparingly, and really not towards the end of that year uh, in 2021. So he only had a couple games underneath his belt going into last year, and so last year was kind of his first full year of as the starter. And and uh, and we we still lost him for a couple games last year because of some injuries. So. Uh, you know, last year there was some ups and downs with him, uh, you know, and he was still le- kind of learning the game a little bit. But um, if you go back, look, he did some really, really good things and put us in a lot of um, positions to win a lot of football games. And really, at the end of the day, that's what you got to have out of that guy, someone that can kind of put you over the, the hurdle versus those tough games and, and can win you some games. And And he's definitely done that since he's been here. Um, with him going, you know, being an all-conference player last year, um, coming into his junior season, he had a really uh, he had a really good off season in the in the in the weight room. He's he, you know he's put some muscle mass on, and this spring he had a really really good spring, um, and really kind of took that next step too in not just being a quarterback but also being a leader um, with the guys. And the guys really respect him, and uh, he he kind of understands that you know this is his team. And he has two years to play, and uh, he, he wants to make the most of that. Coach, let me ask really quickly, too, because this is always a, a fun position to talk about. Even though he is coming back, I, I know that you've been able to recruit. We talked about your players coming in. Uh, is there competition in the camp? Yeah, you know, we've it, it was kind of interesting because not having Adrian um, for some games last year, you know, we wanted to make sure that quarterback room was really deep. And we did that. We signed several really good quarterbacks that are, are, are coming in and uh, that are going to be able to compete. And, uh, you know, every year I've been here, I've not just played one quarterback. And so uh, some of these guys are going to have to step it up pretty darn fast um, and show what they can do to help us. Because at some point, they're, I mean, someone's going to play. You, just don't, you never know when. Um, 
and, and really in our program, uh, nothing's given to you. Um, I told our recruits, our players all the time, if you don't, if you don't want to compete, man, this is not the program for you. Uh, everything we do is a competition. Um, even during fall camp, we, we jump on the cornhole set or the ping pong table. I mean, we're, we're always competing in something. So our, our guys learn that pretty darn fast. Um, and we're not afraid to start a freshman or a sophomore. If they're better, they're going to play. And uh, I think that's really important that when you create that competition or program, uh, no one feels comfortable, right? You, you, you got to bring in all the time. And so it's, it's really, it's really important. I can't compete with them on the field coach, but I might be able to, I can play, still play a, a mean game of ping pong. So I may have to wake it up to earth to Olathe and play some. I, I know where your campus is. I've been there before. It's a beautiful campus. So uh, I may have to stop by sometime. Uh, Adrian or whoever comes out of camp uh, has a couple of good receivers to throw to Paul St. Louis, who did really well last year. Uh, Miles Himes, who did really well the previous year, both of them back. Yeah, you know, uh, yeah, Paul St. Louis is a he's one of those COVID uh, kids. Uh, 2020 came in with me, and uh, you know he'll be a COVID senior, and he's a two-time All-Conference player for us. And the one thing I love about Paul is, uh, you know, you'll see him play receiver, and then he will be on every single special teams, um, every single special team unit, and he loves it. He like asked for it, and it's pretty cool to see that. Um, that he he just doesn't come off the field, never complains. He comes from a really good program in Florida, in Naples, Florida, and that's kind of how they were. That's how they were kind of groomed down there. So uh, he he's been a really good player for us, and uh, and I think he'll have a great year. You know, we didn't have Miles last year. Uh, two years ago, he was our second lead receiver. He was all conference guy for us, and uh, he has two years of play. He'll be someone that's really watch out for. Um, Orlandis Mitchell is another one that was a red shirt freshman last year, and he had his best offseason, his best spring that he has since he's been here. He'll be a big time player for us. Uh, Silas Tumpleman, who's been uh, on a ton of special teams, he's played receiver for us. He's someone else that we can look at. And then, really, we have several guys uh, that just are just competing um, we've had some transfers come in as well and so it'll be exciting to see how that that room kind of plays out because it's a, it's a really really good deep room with that in mind then you still have the running game to talk about you bring back sean cherry sophomore and had a good year for you last year as well uh, how does he help balance things out yeah you know sean sean had a really uh, good season last year as a redshirt freshman um he uh he led us in rushing he's first team all conference back um, and I think, you know, in some of those games where, where we had some injuries or, you know, Adrian was out or we had some guys out, he kind of really, we kind of, uh, relied on him a lot, um, to get those tough yards for us. And, uh, he really did that. And really all of our running backs, I mean, you know, I actually, I've always coached quarterbacks and a couple of years ago, I went to running backs and, uh, we probably have, I'd say the running backs is probably our deepest room, uh, the most talented room out of all the positions, um, you got Sean Cherry, Ken Finley, who is also a punt returner for us. Uh, Ken Finley, uh, he was he, he's a really he's an all conference type running back. Uh, we lost him for some games last year with a knee injury. Caleb Bryant, that will be a senior. Contrell Jones will be a senior. Uh, Malik Washington, Will Petty. I mean, we got we got several guys that can kind of tote the rock if if we need them to. But uh, it's it's a great room to coach. Um, not just because I get to coach it. <laughs> but uh, it's 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 a it's a it's a it's a it's a fun room, um, and we have a good time. Coach, we stay on the offense just for a little bit longer because I I don't ever want to neglect the guys that are in the trenches there. Damian Ruiz, uh, an All Conference performer there on the offensive line. Tell us a little bit about your line coming into twenty three. Yeah, yeah, we have several guys back that's played a lot. Um, you know, losing Andre Brown, which was our, our as a tackle. He's a first team all. He's a two time All Conference player, but. Damian is uh, he's a really good player um, and uh, he'll, he'll be he'll be moving over to the left side this year. And uh, we got Jaden Fuller back, who's played a ton of snaps. You got uh, Devin Vasquez, who's a two year starter. We got uh, Devin Holt, who played a lot last year. You have Blaine Blevins, who who uh, is looking to kind of get in there a little bit. Um, he, he's our long snapper. He played a lot last year. So we have we have several guys who's uh, who's played a lot. Um, Justin Miller is another guy that has came in and had a really good uh, fir first year, and we're looking for him to kind of be a, a big person for us at the guard position. So a lot of those guys, uh, it's it's a really it's a really good room. They they compete, they have fun together, and 
Uh, and really, it starts with the lines at the end of the day. If you don't have an O-line or D-line, it, 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 will, it won't matter. None of these skills, skill positions will matter unless you can move the ball and stop people up front. I really, and that's why I want to make sure those guys are mentioned and, and give them the credit that, that they deserve. We're here on Midwest Sports Network, continuing to preview the 2023 college football season, visiting today with Paul Hanson from Mid America Nazarene. Coach, you moved to the other side of the ball. Anthony Sal returns for you and a player who led the team not only in tackles, but interceptions. So, a uh, couple of big categories right there. I'm sure it's nice to have him back there in the secondary. Yeah, you know, and uh, Anthony is probably our overall, probably the best player. Um, he, he's just overall, he just, he's, he's such a good, he's such a good player, but he's also just that type of person off the field too. And uh, I think there's like three or four guys on our team right now that were even here when I got the job four years ago. And Anthony was one of those. And, uh, you know, Anthony, he's a two-time captain. He's a two-time all-conference player. He's a three-time uh, pack leader, which is kind of our leadership council. And, uh, and, and uh, I think he has a, a great shot to, uh, to maybe get some, a lot of postseason awards this year. And, and uh, he's already kind of getting a lot of looks for the uh, after uh, college at the next level. So um, he, he's just a great player for us. You know, when we got here, he played a lot of safety. And uh, we kind of moved – he's played a lot of safety, but we kind of moved him to corner last year. And he really uh, exceeded in that position, leading our team in interceptions and – and uh, being a first-team all-conference player. So we're really excited for him and, and what he brings to the table for our, our uh, back half. Coach, we moved to the linebacker core. A number of good players you have, a number of good players returning. Jonathan Brown, Marcus Flores among them. Tell us about those players. Yeah, yeah. So I, I would say uh, on our defense, and it really, you know, a year ago when we spoke, uh, you know, our we were talking about our defense, and we were giving up 40-something points a game. It was it wasn't – where it needed to be. And so this last year we dropped, we dropped it down to uh, 13, we dropped it 13 points a game. So now we're in the 20. So defensively we have, we made a lot of improvements uh, this last season. And a lot of these guys are back who were part of that. And Jonathan Brown is one of those that uh, he was one of our first recruiting class. He came in as a, as a D tackle and he was just kind of a, in, in uh, a tweener guys. We're trying to figure out what to do with him. And so a year ago we moved him to inside linebacker. And it was the best move for him. And uh, this spring, I mean, he was he was all over the field. We uh, as an offense guy, we we couldn't block him. I mean, he was all over the field. So I'm looking for him to have a really a really big a big uh, season for us at the linebacker position. You know, some other guys inside. Zach Martinez is a guy that played la- a lot last year as a freshman. He's a he's a very good smart player. Uh, Lance Jones is a transfer that came in in the spring. He he was with us when I was at Western New Mexico University. He's looking to have a really big season as well. Matt Georgie, another transfer that's came in from Pitt State, um, also looks to be like a, a really good player for the inside. And so our inside guys, we're, we're, I feel like we're, uh, we're, we're a little bit faster probably uh, than we have been in the past, and, uh, and so that's really good. On the outside, you know, Marcos Flores is a guy that started every game last year for us at the jack position. Um, a really good player. He, he, he's able to get to the quarterback. And uh, we look for him to have a big sophomore year. So in the linebacker position, we have a lot of guys back that's that's played or a transfer that can help fill some shoes. So we're really excited about it, Coach. And I, I remember that, and and that actually was one of the the, the points that I, I thought about too. Points per game really coming down, and, and it makes a difference. I mean, yeah, I think that's a lot to be said for going from a three win season to a seven win season. Uh, you know, if the defense does what you're expecting them to do, and and it's it's tough, heart. Conference play is is a is a tough thing to do. Keep other teams in check. There's a lot of good off a lot of good offenses there. So, uh, props to your defensive unit for 22. You move ahead to 23. And we get back to the line. Uh, Calvin Broussard as well as Jaden McWilliams on that line. Talk about your defensive line now. Yeah, you know, and I think it kind of starts with Calvin. Last year he had a really good year. He was uh, he was an all conference player for us. He led our D line and and sacks and pressures. Um, and, and, uh, you know, he was just kind of one of those leaders up front. And the one thing I love about, uh, Calvin, he's not, he's not satisfied. Um, he, he's from Texas. He stayed here all summer here in Olathe and you see him every day working really hard because he wants to be all American type player. And, and, uh, he, he, you know, he'll be a junior this year. And so he, he understands that he has to up his game even more, even though he had a good season. And then obviously Jay McWilliams, another guy that was all conference selection for us last year, he's a two-year starter as well. So 
those guys are some guys that we we can um we could build on up front some other guys too you have kevin giffen who is who's a, who's a nose interior guy for us he'll be a senior that's played a lot uh Zywan white is a, another player that uh that got a lot of playing time this last year too he's a good player for us and uh we we also have some transfers coming in too and some young guys that we feel like can be some key depth backup guys for those all conference players so we're really excited for them yeah again nine all conference players returning and that's a big deal too because you, you didn't just graduate those players they had a fantastic season then they ride off into the sunset i mean they're coming back one other area that that needs to be mentioned your special teams and uh, i think about this and this has to be another big factor because you're talking about returning players you punter kicker long snapper Holder, I mean, you, you get everybody back, so you, you're not having to break people in. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and, and really those guys, like uh, especially Trevor, our kicker, and, and Grant, the other, the other kicker who punts as well, like they've, they've done this for two years now, so there's not that kind of – they know what the, they, they, they got to do. Uh, they're not, there's not that nervous type thing where you're going into the season. And for us, it makes it better too because a lot of people don't realize, I mean, the scoring that happens with, with kicking. And, you know, Trevor was our second leading scorer last year with 67 points. Um, but he doesn't get that less the, the snap and the hold is good and, and all that. So we have that whole unit is kind of back. And that's it's really exciting um, and to see their growth. And uh, so it's, it's really good. Coach, we were mentioning just a moment ago the fact that the season is, I mean, wow, we're going to blink and it's going to be here. I mean, it's its less than two and a half months away. You're counting down the days at this point in time. So let's talk about it. It opens up out of conference play, a, a nice uh, regional matchup as you travel to Langston to take on the Lions. That's August 26th and then uh, get to play into the heart north uh, hosting Grandview your first game back at home and that's going to be on September 2nd September 9th on the road again at Peru State uh, the heart south play begins after a bye week which works out really really well for you just a strategic time for the bye week good job with the scheduling there I don't know if you did that or not uh, but then you go all the way through and and by the way and I, I do want to talk about the opening to the season but the closing as well. I mean, you, you played a shootout against Benedictine two years ago. I mean, 128 points scored, a ridiculous number. We talked about what Parsons did in that game just briefly. And then last season, playing with uh, a championship on the line, the final game of the season. It's uh, going to be against Benedictine to close things out again. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, our conference is so, first off, is so, is so strong. And uh, I think as you kind of get through the year, you kind of can it helps get you ready for the, for those games towards the end of the year. And uh, like I said, in November, we want to play meaningful games and uh, you know, Benedictine, they're a great, great team, great program. And uh, you know, our guys know that at the end of the day, if you want to go to the playoffs or you want to, you want to play in the postseason, you're going to have to see some of these guys and, and beat them. And, 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 and really all these teams are, are really strong. You know what I mean? Um, you know, we opened with Grandview towards the beginning of the year, and what another, what a better opportunity to kind of go against one of the best in the country and and try to see where we're at as a program. And uh, and so, really, you know, when I when I first got here, it was you know in 2020, it was just like, oh my gosh, we got we got these we got all these guys and that we got to play. And and now it's just kind of like we want to play these we want to play these teams because we want we want to be we want to be considered you know, like some of these teams and that, that make the playoffs and go deep. And, and I feel like we're kind of getting there as a program, but we're going to have to go earn it. You know what I mean? And, and our guys are very hungry for that. So it's, it's really exciting to kind of see where we're at. Um, but the final product is not done by no means. Well, coach, I, close to a playoff spot last year and again, fighting. And like you mentioned, and I'll, I'll use your words, meaningful games in November and the pioneers were definitely playing meaningful games in November and we look to see that again as well in 2023. Coach, we're going to be following this year. Coach Paul Hansen from Mid-American Nazarene, thank you so much for taking time with us today. I appreciate getting to hear about the program again, and I've enjoyed getting to visit with you. Uh, your open invitation to come back to, to the program at any point in time, but success to you all, and we'll follow Mid-American Nazarene in 23. Awesome. Thank you again, and uh, let's have a great season.